ماذا كن جا بهاري جايا غوبي جانا بالا با غيري بارا داري جايا كوبي جانا بالا با غيري بارا داري يا شودا ناندا نا برجا جانا رن جانا يا شودا ناندا نا برجا جانا رن جانا يا مونا تيرا بنا چاري يا مونا تيرا بنا چاري Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Vihari Jaya Gopi Janavallava Giri Vara Dhari Jaya Gopi Janavallava Giri Vara Dhari يا سودا ناندا نا برجا جانا رن جانا يا سودا ناندا نا برجا جانا رن جانا يا مونا تيرا بنا چاري يا مونا تيرا بنا چاري جاي رادا مادا با كن جا بهاري جاي رادا مادا با كن جا بهاري جايا غوبي جانا بالا با غيري بار داري
jaya kope janavala va girivaradani yashoda nanda na braja janaram jana Yashoda Nanda Navraja Janaranjana Yashoda Nanda Navraja Janaranjana Yamuna Tira Vanachari Yamuna Tira Vanachari Jaya Radha Madhava Radha Madhava Radha Jaya Radha Madhava Radha Madhava Radha Prabhu Pad, Prabhu Pad, Prabhu Pad, Jaya Prabhu Pad Sila Prabhupada ki jai. Jai Vishnu Pad Paramahamsa Parivarika Charya Stotara Sata Sisimad Abhai Charanara Vinda Bhaktivedanta Swami Sila Prabhupada ki jai. Ananta Koti Vaishnava Vrindi ki. Nama Chari Sila Haridas Thakur ki. Premse Kaha Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadada Sri Sadi Goda Bhakti Vrindi ki. Granta Rashi Mad Bhagavatan ki. Yanitai Gouda Premanande, all glories to the assembled devotees, all glories to the assembled devotees, all glories to the assembled devotees, all glories, all glories to the lotus feet of Sri Guru and Sri Gouranga, all glories to Srila Prabhupada. Om Agyanati Mirandasya, Gyananjana Salakaya, Chaksurum Militanjena, Tasma Sri Gurave Namaha. Shri Chaitanya Mano Vishtam Stapitan Yena Bhutale Swayan Rupa Katamahyam Dadati Swapadantikam Vandeham Siguro Siyuta Padakamalam Shri Gurum Vaishnavam Shcha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Ragunatam Bitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padam Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakam Bitam Shya He Krishna Karuna Sindho Dinabandho Yagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namastute Tapta Kanchana Gorange Radhe Vrindavaneshvare Vrishavanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vancha Kalpa Tarubhyascha Kripa Sindhubhya Evacha Patita Nam Pavanevyo Vaishnavevyo Namo Namaha Yaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhara Shiva Shadi Gora Vakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya So we're reading from Canto 8, Chapter 11, Text 8 to 25. 
The longest purport is for, for text eight, but... Okay, so I'll read from text eight to 25, then we can recite, recite the Sanskrit. Okay. Text eight. Seeing the movements of time, those who are cognizant of the real truth neither rejoice nor lament for different circumstances. Therefore, because you are jubilant due to your victory, you should be considered not very learned. This verse in itself is like a whole week. We have like 13 verses or so. So I'll read the purport. I'll be focusing on this verse. Bali Maharaj, purport by His Divine Grace, Sila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Bali Maharaj knew that Indra, King of Heaven, was extremely powerful, certainly more powerful than he himself. Nonetheless, Bali Maharaj challenged Indra by saying that Indra was not a very learned person. In Bhagavad Gita 2.11, Krishna rebuked Arjuna by saying, Asochyam ambasochas tuam pragya vadam chavashase katasum agatasum cha nanu sochanti pandita. While speaking learned words, you are mourning for what is not worthy of grief. Those who are wise lament neither for the living nor the dead. Thus, a Krishna, thus as Krishna challenged Arjuna by saying that he was not a pandit or a learned person, Bali Maharaj also challenged King Indra and his associates. In this material world, everything happens under the influence of time. Consequently, for a learned person who sees how things are taking place, there is no question of being sorry or happy because of the waves of material nature. After all, since we are being carried away by these waves, what is the meaning of being jubilant or morose? One who is fully conversant with the laws of nature is never jubilant or morose because of nature's activities. In Bhagavad Gita 2.14, Krishna's advice advises that one be tolerant. Following this advice of Krishna's, one should not be morose or unhappy because of circumstantial changes. This is the symptom of a devotee. What is the symptom of a devotee? Just to check everybody's attention. What is the symptom of a devotee? Huh? Ah? Specifically, one should not be morose or unhappy by circumstantial changes. If we just get this from today's class, it'll be successful. I'll repeat. Following this advice of Krishna, that one should be tolerant, one should not be morose or unhappy because of circumstantial changes. This is the symptom of a devotee. A devotee carries out his duty in Krishna consciousness and is never unhappy in awkward circumstances. He has full faith that in such circumstances, Krishna protects his devotee. Therefore, a devotee never deviates from his prescribed duty of devotional service. The material qualities of jubilation and moroseness are present even in the demigods, who are very highly situated in the upper planetary system. Therefore, one is undisturbed by so-called favor favorable and unfavorable circumstances of this material world. He should be understood, sorry, therefore when one is undisturbed by the so-called favorable or unfavorable circumstances of this material world, he should be understood to be Brahma Bhuta or self-realized. As stated in Bhagavad Gita 1854, 
ब्रह्मभूता प्रसन्न आत्मा न सोचती न कांक्षती वन हु इज ट्रांसटेंडेंटली सिचुएटेड एट वंस रियलाइजेस द सुप्रीम ब्रह्मांड एंड बिकम्स फुली जॉयफुल व्हेन वन इज अनडिस्टर्ब बाय मटेरियल सरकमस्टेंसेस ही शुड बी अंडरस्टूड to be on the transcendental stage above the reactions of the three modes of material nature text 9 your de you demigods think that your own selves are the cause of your attaining fame and victory because of your ignorance saintly persons feel sorry for you therefore although your words afflict the heart we do not accept them then Sukadeva Goswami said after thus rebuking Indra king of heaven with sharp words Bali Maharaj who could subdue any other hero drew back to his ear the arrows known as Nara Narachas and attacked Indra with these arrows then he again chastised Indra with strong words text 11 since Maharaj Bali's rebukes were truthful King Indra did not at all become sorry just as an elephant beaten by its driver's rod does not become agitated text 12 when indra the defeater of enemies released his infallible thunderbolt scepter at bali maharaj with a desire to kill him bali maharaj indeed fell to the ground with his airplane like a mountain with its wings cut off purport In many descriptions in Vedic literature it is found that mountains also fly in the sky with wings when such mountains are dead they fall to the ground where they stay as very large dead bodies do you believe it <laughs> yes sure text 13 when the demon jambasura saw that his friend bali had fallen he appeared before indra the enemy just to serve bali maharaj with friendly behavior text 14 the greatly powerful jamba asura carried by a lion approached indra and forcefully struck him on the shoulder with his club he also struck indra's elephant text 15 being beaten by jamba asura's club indra's elephant was confused and aggrieved Thus it touched its knees to the ground and fell unconscious. Text 16. Thereafter, Matali, Indra's chariot driver, brought Indra's chariot which was drawn by 1000 horses. Indra then left his elephant and got onto the chariot. Appreciating Matali's service, Jambasura, the best of the demons, smiled. Nonetheless, he struck matali in the battle with a trident of blazing fire 18 although the pain was extremely severe matali tolerated it with great patience indra however became extremely angry at jamba asura he struck jamba asura with his thunderbolt and thus severed his head from his body 19 when narada rishi informed jamba asura's friends and relatives that jambasura's jambasura had been killed the three demons named namuchi bala and paka arrived on the battlefield in great haste 20 rebuking indra with harsh cruel words that were piercing to the heart these demons showered him with arrows just as torrents of rain wash a great mountain 21 quickly handling the situation on the battlefield the demon bala put all of indra's 1000 horses into tribulation by simultaneously piercing them piercing them all with an equal number of arrows text 22 paka another demon attacked both the chariot with all its paraphernalia and the chariot driver matali by fitting 200 arrows to his bow and releasing them all simultaneously this was indeed a wonderful act on the battlefield 23 then namuchi another demon 
attacked Indra and injured him with 15 very powerful golden feather arrows, which roared like a cloud full of water. 24. Other demons covered Indra, along with his chariot and chariot driver, with incessant showers of arrows, just as clouds cover the sun in the rainy season. 25. Okay. Please repeat. Alakshayantas tamativa vivalam. Alakshayantas tamativa vivalam. Vichu krushur deva ganasahanugam. Vichu krushur deva ganasahagunaham. Anayaka shatru balena nirjitam. Anayaka shatru balena nirjitam. Vanik pata vinna navojatar navem. Vanik pata vinna navojatar navem. Alakshayantas tam ativa vivalam. Vichu krushur deva ganasahanugam. Anayaka shatru balena nirjita. Vanik pata binna navojatar navem. Bolo. Lakshayanta stamati vavivala. Alakshayanta stamati vavivala. Vichuk shulte vagana sahanuga. Anayaka shatru valena nirjita. Panik pata vina nato tanave. Alakshayanta stamati vavivala. Vichu krusur deva ganasana. Anayaka shatru valena nirjita. Alakshayantaha Being unable to see Tam King Indra Ativa Fiercely Bivalaha Bewildered Vichukrushuhu 
began to lament. Devaganaha, all the demigods. Saha Anugaha, with their followers. Anayakaha, without any captain or leader. Shatrubalina, by the superior power of their enemies. Nirjitaha, oppressed severely. Vanik Pataha, traitors. Vinnanavaha, whose ship is wrecked. Yata Arnave, as in the middle of the ocean. Translation. The demigods being severely oppressed by their enemies and being unable to see Indra on the battlefield were very anxious. Having no captain or leader, they began lamenting like traders in a wrecked vessel in the midst of the ocean. Purport. From this statement, it appears that in the upper planetary system, there is shipping and that traders they are engaged in navigation as their occupational duty. Sometimes, as on this planet, these traders are shipwrecked in the middle of the ocean. It appears that even in the upper planetary system, such calamities occasionally take place. The upper planetary system is, in the creation of the Lord is certainly not vacant or devoid of living entities. From Srimad Bhagavatam, we understand that every planet is full of living entities just as Earth is. There is no reason to accept that on other planetary systems there are no living beings. Sila Prabhupada Ki Jai. So I will read again text 8 because it's a powerful verse and we'll focus on that. Please repeat. Seeing the movements of time, those who are cognizant of the real truth Neither rejoice nor lament for different circumstances. Therefore, because you are jubilant due to your victory, you should be considered not very learned. So I would like to request the blessings of the many senior Vaishnavas assembled here and all the Vaishnavas and Vaishnavis. So I may speak some words that may touch our hearts. We can apply this very um, high standard of consciousness which is being presented here in the Bhagavatam. And the disease of the mind is that is absorbed in duality. Happiness, distress, heat, cold, fame, infamy, to become joyful or morose because of the circumstances. But actually, as it's explained here in this verse, that the wise person, he understands that happiness is depending on a state of consciousness. It doesn't depend on how the world moves around us. The materialistic person will try to fight his environment. He will try to adjust it. But the devotee, he will see how the environment is helping me to advance in Krishna consciousness. Now, easy to, see, easy to say, but uh, the application of this is very difficult. Uh, and what is the is basic, basically, in order to be able to do this, we have to uh, add something to our perception of reality, hmm? or what we call reality. Something or, or someone. Who is that that we need to add? Krishna. Hmm? Prabhupada was time, one time was saying that to one the body like one plus one is two. Two plus two is four. Three plus four, 
don't remember exactly, seven. And then he said, everything or anything plus Krishna is Vrindavan. So, Vrindavan consciousness means that we, the, the residents in Vrindavan, they don't see anything separately from Krishna. And because of this consciousness, they are always joyful. <laughs> they are always blissful. And uh, the conditioned living entities within the material world, uh, we are absorbed in material consciousness as far as we don't see Krishna. And when we don't see Krishna, then we become absorbed in duality. And why we don't see Krishna is often because of forgetfulness of our own uh, identity. We are identifying with the body. We forget who Krishna is and who we are. The real disease, the real trouble in this material world as described by uh, Vyasadev is that we are identifying with this material body and mind and we, that causes forgetfulness. Why is Krishna saying that one should not be disturbed by duality? It's many verses. I will say, I will, I will even dare to say that there is more verses on this topic than any other topic in Bhagavad Gita in regards to don't, to not be disturbed by duality. Huh? Hold 12 chapter. Advesta sarva bhutanam maitra karunai vacha nirma mo nirhankara sama dukkha sukakshami santushto satatan yogi jatat madrida nishchaya mayar pita mano budir yomad bhakta seme priyam says one who is not envious who is many qualities I'll just focus on there. He said one who is not disturbed by happiness and distress fear and anxiety eh? One who doesn't distinguish between friend and enemies, eh? this is let Samosa Trocha Mitecha, Tata Mana Pamana Yo, not disturbed by fame, infamy, eh? Sitoshna, eh? heat, cold. What Krishna says about the person who is not affected by these things? He is very dear to me. He becomes very dear. Why? Why the devotee becomes dear to him when he is able to? tolerate the circumstances. I thought about it. And uh, because that means we trust Krishna. Is it not? A person who, who actually is all based on faith. If we have faith that Krishna loves us, right? If we have faith that Krishna is the supreme controller, yeah? And if we have faith that Krishna is, the supreme, is supremely merciful, yeah? why will we be affected by the circumstances? Why, why will we be disturbed? Huh? Because ultimately, uh, the devotee, the learned person, what is being explained here by Prabhupada is that the, pers the learned person, he doesn't, he's not uh, absorbed with the relative cause. He's seeing what is the ultimate cause. And what is the ultimate cause? Sarva karana karanam. It's Krishna himself. So when we are fighting, when we are like, um, you know, taking shelter, not taking shelter of Krishna, but taking shelter of my own effort, to adjust my environment, it means that I am not trusting Krishna. Prabhupada, one time, he was approached by one of his disciples and, and he was saying, well, how can we trust anyone? You know, people, sometimes they're not following. And Prabhupada said, trust no one. He said, trust Krishna. He will never let you down. So does it mean what Prabhupada meant by saying trust no one? It means that we trust no one? What is the emphasis on this? 
when he said trust Krishna when when Prabhupada is saying trust Krishna it means that actually the ultimate doer the ultimate you know cause is Krishna so therefore even though things may be going out of control even things may, be, may appear to be uh, unfavorable, even things appear to be disturbing, we should trust Krishna. That actually he is the supreme controller. And he is arranged, if we have firm faith in this, we will see that actually ultimate, the, ultimately this is for my benefit. Krishna is trying to teach me here something. What is it? I am, a, I am supposed to grow from this situation. That doesn't mean that we don't do anything. But like Prabhupada is saying nicely in this purple, Prabhupada is so concise, so eloquent. Huh? He's saying that one should continue and one should perform his prescribed duty in devotional service. So whenever there is trouble, whenever we find ourselves in a situation like a, when we are in the ocean, always there's going to be turbulence, right? So what do we do? We should ask ourselves, what is my duty in this situation? And I should carry on with my duty and have full faith, full conviction that Krishna will make the necessary arrangements in due course. It's all based on love, actually. I was thinking about this thing, about the mountains with wings. Has anyone seen a mountain with wings? I guess no. Huh? Prabhupada one time, I believe he was in New Vrindavan, and he pointed a mountain and said, that mountain used to fly. Yeah? So why do we believe these things? Why do we believe that, you know, things are beyond our experience, they exist. It's because of love, is it not? Because we love Prabhupada, because we love Krishna, and because we have an experience uh, that is nourishing ourselves, that we are prepared to believe anything. Because we're getting a direct experience. Eh? Bhakti, Parishan, Uvavo, Viraktir, Anyatra, Chaisha, Trika eka kala, prapamadanyas, prapadiamanasya, yatas natasyur, tushti, pushti, chut, apayor nugasam. He says, he's described in the 11th canto that uh, the comparison is made between eating and doing devotional service. And it says that when you, when you eat, three things take place at the same time. Guess what? What happens when we eat? Huh? There is satisfaction, okay? What else? Body is nourished and? <laughs> no, if you eat healthily, there is cessation of hunger. Eh? So the Acharyas explain that when you do devotional service, three things take place you know, simultaneously, bhakti, eh, devotion, and this compared to satisfaction. Eh? We get some satisfaction by doing bhakti. Then there is par uh, bhakti parishanu bhavo. There is actually direct perception of the Lord. We get direct realization of Krishna. Eh? This is the nourishment. And then also, there is virakti. Eh? Virakti means there is detachment. And it's compared to cessation of hunger. Which is interesting, it's explained that this virakti is different from tiag or renunciation. Eh? Renunciation means that you renounce the objects of sense gratification. But virakti actually means that even in the presence of the objects of the sense gratification, you have no attraction. Why? Because of a higher taste. When that higher taste is there, then we are no longer attra you know, attracted by the material energy. So we have this experience. 
Is it not? That's why we surrender, why we join. I don't think any amount of philosophy or any amount of anything is sufficient to convince us as much as having that direct experience. We come to the Holy Lamb and we feel this spiritual atmosphere. It's very nourishing. We come into Mangalarti every morning. We're chanting Hare Krishna every day. We're doing the same things every day. We're being nourished. And this nourishment is actually uh, like um, strengthening our faith. And when that faith is very strong, we can't believe anything. Yes. How many millions of demigods? How many million demigods are there? Trillions of demigods? I believe that. You know? No problem. Because we have that conviction. So coming back to the point of this coming to this, you know, perfection of consciousness where we don't hunger, we don't lament, we, not, we don't desire. We have to actually realize. We have to be constantly reminded, actually. Because this realization is very high. Most of the time, when the trouble comes, we become disturbed. So what do we do at that time? We have to remember Krishna is my protector. Krishna is my well-wisher. There is a plan here. And if I cannot see the plan, why Krishna is arranging this uh, unfavorable situation, then what do you do? If you cannot see Krishna's hands, you trust no one, right? You don't go to anyone to find out what's going on with your life. Is there, just checking if you are listening, that's all. Is that what you do? When you are in trouble, will you have some difficulty? Will you are overcome by joy or moroseness? Then you try to remember Krishna, you try to see Krishna in this situation, and then you don't tell anyone else. If you don't see Krishna in that situation, is that what you do? Actually, what you do in that situation, if you really trust Krishna, uh, and you cannot see Krishna in the picture, you will understand that Krishna will help you. How? Through the devotees. Uh, and you will look for advice. You will, be, you will be willing to reveal your heart and mind. Not to anyone, of course. But you will be able to do that to someone whom you trust. And you will be able to trust that Krishna will be able to direct you through the mouth of this devotee. Yes? Is it a symptom of someone who trusts Krishna that he doesn't, you know, reveal his mind to other devotees? Because this point about becoming, and in one sense also like here, this point is being given Many times in the Bhagavad, I was kidding. Even you know who gave this advice to not be morose and become joyful? Huh? Even Iranya Kashipu and even uh, Jara Sanda. When Sishupal, when Krishna kidnapped Rukmini, Jara Sanda was telling Sishupal, you know, I, I, I lost my vital like 17 times, you know. <laughs> Krishna took it away. Don't give up, you know, you should fight on, you know, because. Actually, this is all being carried away by the waves of time. And so what are the waves of time? Yeah, destiny. It's not just the hours and the minutes. But actually, when, we, when the, 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 the Vedas speak about time, it's a concept of time, the concept of, you know, the three modes of material nature. Things are just going on. And we should not become absorbed in the actions and reactions of the material world, but we should actually, this should be an impetus for us to take shelter of Krishna. And automatically when we take shelter of Krishna, then we become free from the disturbance to an extent, of course, to the degree that we are advanced, to the degree that we, are, we have realized it. I always like to uh, meditate on Srila Prabhupada when he was in his deathbed. And, um, <coughs> The, the doctor came and he saw him and he saw him in such a condition that he said anyone, anyone in this condition will be crying in agony 
It's, 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 no, skin, it's no, no flesh there, it's just skin and bones. It's, it's the, 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 the nerves are touching the bones. It's the most painful thing. There's nothing more painful than this. And Prabhupada was saying, Dehinus mean jata dehe kumaran yavanan yara tata dehantara pratir dhiras tatra namuhiti. A sober person is not bewildered eh, by the change of body. His consciousness was clear. To the extent he was translating the Srimad Bhagavatam. He was setting an example for us. I believe it's what Bhakti, Prabhupada told Bhakti Charu Swami when he, they were still in Rishikesh. And he said, let's go to Vrindavan. He says, it's time for me to depart. And he said, he said, it must be glorious. My death must be glorious. So what he was teaching us, he was teaching us the same principle. We have to become equipoise. We have to become, because the test is going to come. I mean, the highest test is death. Never mind just that we have some problem with the temple president or, or even that we have some problem with our own anarthas. Huh? When death comes, can you imagine how disturbing that situation is going to be? So Prabhupada himself, as Acharya, demonstrated what to do eh? to remain equipoise, remain fixed on Krishna. He must be glorious. So as devotees, we have the, the duty actually to, to practice. Eh? It's very easy to say these things, but to walk our talk, to practice these principles, that's what makes us devotees. There was one time the Prabhupada was, was in an, they were in an airplane in an, and there was some kind of hooligans, some football team or something, they were on the plane. plane. Brahmananda was with Prabhupada, some of the devotees. And Prabhupada, they were causing a lot of disturbance, a lot of noise, and Prabhupada so, told them, just go and tell them to be quiet. You know? So Brahmananda went one time and they went quiet for one minute or five minutes and they started to make noise again. And Brahmananda, Prabhupada said, go again and then tell them to be quiet. He went and told them to be quiet. And then, still, they were making noise. So Pra Brahmananda said, okay, you know, I'll go and tell them now, you know, like, I'm going to be forceful. And Prabhupada said, no. He said, if we cannot tolerate, what is the difference between us and them? So Prabhupada, in many ways, he exemplified this philosophy. Now, there is another angle that we can take this verse of don't, don't, no, not becoming joyful or morose. And I'm thinking also that in our uh, Krishna conscious practices, sometimes we may become very joyful because things are going well. People are smiling to us, with, we're doing things nicely, or you know, the desire seems to have to vanish. And sometimes, the anarthas become very, very strong. We become overcome by, by, by our desires, by our difficulties. So then what to do? What is Krishna's advice in that situation? When there is problem, eh? do we become morose? Uh, so Krishna tells Uddhava in the 11th, in the 11th canto, Famous verse, having awakened knowledge, sorry, having awakened faith in the narrations of my glories, a devotee, uh, and a devotee, I'm just paraphrasing, I don't remember the verse exactly, it says a devotee, he knows that sense gratification leads to misery. But sometimes, even though he has this faith, sometimes he still engages in sense gratification. Uh, but he says that even when he does that, he should, he says, Drida Vrata, he says, or Drida Nishchaya, it is with, with great determination and faith. Yeah? One should continue with his devotional practices. And he says that and one, should not become, one should remain happy. One should not become uh, like. The, the Prabhupada disciples in the purple, they say that one should not become chronically depressed. Uh, one, should become, one should remain happy in Krishna consciousness. 
Again, why? Is Krishna our friend? How do we have, you know, Krishna is on our side. When, 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 when all those verses are there that, you know, encouraging us to take shelter in Krishna. Krishna actually, he is more willing, Prabhupada repeats this point in, the, in his purpose many times. He says that Krishna is more willing to take us back home than we are. So this lack of, uh, this fear that we have of surrendering, this fear that we have of the circumstances that arrive in our life is because of lack of trust in Krishna. And, you know, the, this surrender of the devotee is not a painful surrender. It's like when, when the father opens his arms, eh? the son will, carry, will, go, will run to his father eh? with full conviction, full faith that I'm safe. Sometimes you see, a, I, don't worry, you know, I remember myself being getting lost in the shopping mall and you're crying and crying and crying. And no matter who picks you up, right? You're still like crying, you know, and finally your father gets you. And he's like, oh. So Krishna is like this. Even when, when difficulties are there, even when disturbances come in our lives, we should embrace it. We should actually embrace the purification. Like, take it, this is Krishna's mercy. Uh, Krishna is helping me here. We should have that, that conviction, that faith. And then we can, it's like a blissful surrender. Oh. So we have to um, develop this conviction, this faith in Krishna by constantly reading the scriptures, by associating with the devotees, by being very strict in our practices of Krishna consciousness, and when there is some difficulty, when there is some problem, we should be able to open up with some devotee. We should have someone that we can actually uh, reveal our minds to. Maybe one person, maybe many people. And uh, we should repent. If we do something wrong, we should repent. But we should not give up the conviction that I will be successful at the end. 100%. There is no, there is no uh, reason to be morose in Krishna consciousness, to be negative. And this is Prabhupada, I was just touching in the folio about morose, I just type morose. Eh? And Prabhupada, every time he says, being morose means not being Krishna conscious. It means being absorbed in the duality. Yona Rishyati Nadisti, what is that verse? Yona Rishyati Nadisti, Nasochati Nakangchati. Suba Suba Paritiagi Yomad Bhakta Semebriya. It's a devotee, he not, doesn't rejoice, he doesn't lament, eh? he doesn't hunker for anything, he doesn't depend in auspicious or inauspicious, or inauspicious activities. Eh? When a person is in this type of consciousness, very exalted consciousness, then he's very dear to the Lord. Eh? And like Prabhupada, like um, at the end, Lord Brahma states in the 10th canto, what is his consciousness? Prabhupada told us to wear this verse like a necklace. Eh? What is the verse that we should wear as a necklace? Tate nukampam susamik shamano bungyana evatma kritam vipaka ridvag vapurvir pidadan namaste jiveta yomukti pade sadayabak that one who endlessly waits for Krishna to bestow his costless, costless mercy upon him, all the, way, all the while, you know, suffering, tolerating eh, the sinful reactions that come, then if he tolerates and he remains steady in his practice of Krishna consciousness, he becomes eligible to go back to the kingdom of God. Thank you very much. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Any questions or comments or corrections? Prabhu? My name is Radhika Nagara Das. Nagara. It's not Nagar. They usually put Nagar. Naga means the town. Nagara means the lover. 
So he's the servant of the lover of Radhika, the paramour. It's not Radhika's town. Because we have Krishna Nagar, Vidya Nagar, Radhika Nagar. No, it's Radhika Nagara. I take the opportunity to say this. Thank you, Prabhu. Hare. Prabhu, uh, I don't have a book in front of me. I believe it's text number nine where it says something like, even though the words were very harsh to the heart, he did not oh. take. Do you mind touching on that? Because who's he talking about? It, Indra didn't take heart. Bali Maharaj didn't take heart. Whoever it was, they're an elevated soul and there was disturbance, but they were not overcome by it because... Text 9, huh? You demigods. So it's, it's Bali. You demigods think that your own selves are the cause of your attaining fame and victory. Because of your ignorance, saintly persons feel sorry for you. Therefore, although your words afflict the heart, we do not accept them. Actually, no, this is a... Who is speaking here? Yeah, this is actually Bali. And he's speaking wise words. Huh? So he's a pure devotee, and this is showing how sometimes people think the pure devotees don't feel uh, that which is taking place in their body or mind. The heart beats not with the mind, but they don't accept it. It's not me, it's not real. Krishna is mm -hmm. my shelter. My closer. What, what's again? What do you want me to comment on? Sorry, I missed. Bali Maharaj is saying these words, even though they uh, inflict the heart, afflict the heart, we do not accept them. So sometimes, yeah, the okay, think. okay, yeah. So nice, thank you very much. This, um, like I said, Bhagavad Gita is telling us all these things about, you know, being equipoise. So what does it mean to be equipoise? Does it mean that we become like a piece of wood, we don't have any emotions, we don't have any feelings? Prabhupada himself, he was a, you know, every picture you see, he's displaying different emotions, different feelings. Huh? But his, what it means, and that's how I understood it, and I have discussed it with senior Vaishnavas, because um, I read these verses, well, no, I haven't read them for a while, but I used to read them very regularly, you know. And I recommend, if you are going through, through some uh, difficult situation, any time in your spiritual life, you can read verses 13 to 20 of the Bhagavad Gita, chapter 12. Read them very slowly and loud. Yeah? And Prabhupada just gives the nectar there. It's like wonderful, wonderful. So I was always wondering about this, what it means that we don't become uh, disturbed, we become equipoise. And it means that we, you know, we have emotions, we have feelings, but our faith, our conviction that Krishna is God, Krishna is my protector, he's my, my well-wisher, that's what is not disturbed. And I'll carry on with my duty. I remember one time, my, one of my Yamastami Prabhu, he told me once, you know, I was speaking about my mother. He said she's going to may pass away. And I may pass a comment. I, I was kind of, yeah, she will probably leave her body soon. And he picked up. I was kind of being a little, maybe, he said, he said are you de very detached or something? And I said, well, you know, I haven't, I left many years back. I haven't had much contact with her. I love her, but, uh, you know, I'm, it's not such an influential person in my life. He said, so you wait when she leaves. <laughs> you wait. So, I, you know, and when she left her body, I remember, I was disturbed. But I was, more, more, more than anything, I was disturbed out of joy. Because Krishna made the, the most amazing arrangement that I was with her. Even though I was in my, you know, he, I came and I was right with her at the time of leaving her body, you know. So I was like, totally, a big reciprocation from the Lord. So I was disturbed. I was, I was not able to, you know, I called my father, I couldn't speak. He, he understood. So the point is that 
what doesn't become disturbed is our conviction. It's our faith. You know? And you know, we may be, I'm, and right now in the middle of this, you know, some people, what it, one of the most irritating things that is is when someone is offensive to another the worry and is not justified, and on the top some people believe them, it's like really annoying, yeah? But then you have to see actually, well, what is Krishna in this situation? What am I supposed to learn from this? How am I supposed to respond to the situation? Should you just not do anything? Should I, you know? But all the while we're praying to Krishna. Krishna, what is, you know, please help me. Please, uh, you know, let me remember you in the, in the whole thing. <laughs> and what is Krishna doing on the altar, right? Have you seen any time Krishna saying, oh, I don't know how I'm going to fix this up, you know? Have you ever gone to the temple and, and see Krishna and Krishna saying, oh, well, you know, don't bother me with this. too complicated, right? It's not like that, right? It's, he's always like joyful, you know? I remember other time I was like so disturbed, some big problem. It was, it was like a real big problem. I was reasons to be disturbed. I had reasons to be, and I went to the temple. It was in Delhi, Sisi Radha Parthasarathy. And, uh, and I just saw Krishna, you know. If somehow I got some mercy that day. And it was like, you know, like in the movies when someone falls in love with someone and everything becomes blurred around. You just see the person, you know. So all of a sudden, just, I just seen the deities and we just like really playing his flute and I was thinking the verse came into my mind it says of the cheat of gamblers I am the cheat you know and it was like don't you have faith in me that was my I wasn't hearing his words of course I'm a fool but that was what was coming up in my heart you know don't you have faith in me do you think these people are gonna get away with it don't you think I'm gonna protect you and he was just laughing his head off at me <laughs> you know and that's what he's doing here. Like sometimes they say the joke is that tell Krishna your plans, yeah? And then because we are so much self-absorbing and this is the whole point about being the controllers and the enjoyers and all these tribulations that come into our life, they come so that we understand I am not the controller. I am not the enjoyer. Krishna is. And I am his part and parcel and my duty is to serve him under any circumstances. Ashlishya va padaratam pinastumam adarshanam marmahatam karatuba yata tata va vidadatulam pato matprana natas tu saivana paraha. He may embrace me, he been trampled upon me. Still, he is my Lord. Very high consciousness. We're talking of very high principles here, but we have to practice. And remember that this consciousness, what we're just talking about here today in this class, is Uttama Adhikari. That's the topmost devotee. We are practicing devotees. So we will become overwhelmed by these things, but we have to practice. And we have to remember this. And we have to remain fixed in our determination to serve Krishna. And when difficulty have, comes, have faith that Krishna is on our side, and no one else knows as well as he does how difficult it is for us to turn back to him. <laughs> he knows it better than anybody else. He, he knows. And he understands. Hare Krishna. Sila Prabhupada ki jai. Granta Rashimad Bhagavatam ki jai. Nitai Gora Premanande. You can ask. We finish the class now. You can comment to me. Because we finished now, it's, it's already ten past almost. Oh. Sorry.